Yes, we shall overcome. We shall overcome. God bless every one of you that are under the sound of my voice. This is Apostle Jean Morris of the International Gathering of Apostles and Prophets Network. God has assigned this ministry to cry aloud and spare not. Even as Israel and Hamas is at war this November the 19th, 2023, where literally thousands have died. The conclusion of a decision to withstand an onslaught of death that has been incensed against Israel. October 7th, I believe it was, there were rockets and missiles and whatever launched against Israel. People went in and began to kill. And that caused hundreds of deaths to end, I'm sorry, hundreds of lives to end in one day, and Israel declared war. Death. Death has been incensed against Israel, and they have responded and retaliated, and that is normal for a nation to do. When you look at the definition of death, it means to end life on purpose, to end life on purpose. Sometimes the purpose is satanic where Satan concludes to end life. Sometimes it's just a normal result of the body shutting down through disease or something that has entered into a person of age. However, it's death. Then there's another reason for death as we have seen these days where the instruments of war are used and life is ended. You know, the Spirit of God has a way of opening our minds and our hearts when He is in our lives. For several years, the Spirit of God has had this ministry dealing with a word which has been foreign to some, but now it may be uh, more in the forefront of their minds, and that word is eugenics. Eugenics is population control. There are people that have no doubt wondered why is Apostle Morris talking about this? Why is she talking about abortion? Why is she talking about prison population? Why is she now, she brought up about sex trafficking? Why is she talking about these different things? Death to a people is death to a people regardless of who the people are. In the case of eugenics, there are 
sometimes legal ways that death can enter in on a people. In the case of the people of color, death entered into our circles big time where thousands and now millions entered into death. They were killed. Well, somebody said, well, when did that happen? It's been happening for days, weeks, months, and years. The only difference is the army is legalized by the government. And the victims of war are unborn babies. Not missiles, not bullets, not rifles, not those things that are normal in war but the surgeon's grabble, grabber, surgical knives go in and bring a life to death. Sometimes the baby's arms are cut out and off, off and out before it's, the whole body is removed, different parts of the body. There is a doctor on YouTube that describes in depth how a baby is aborted. He sat in front of lawyers and other legal people and he showed them the instruments by which a surgeon slowly but surely ends the life of a baby and he named the different surgeon's tools. Well, Hamas has, has uh, tools that they're using to kill Israel. Surgeons have tools that they kill babies. It's no difference. Death is death. It doesn't make a difference how it's done. But God sees. God knows the why. Hamas wants Israel off of the land that they say is theirs. Well, Israel says it's theirs. So you have that war there. First the war of words, now the war that people are dying on both sides. Death. God knows about all of it. And he definitely knows about abortion. A eugenic aftermath over 70-some million babies dead. Over 30 million of those babies are Africa, Afro-American babies that limited our population growth, that limited our voting possibilities, that limited our interest into colleges, that limited the use of census money toward our neighborhoods. Yes, 30-some million babies, 30-some million lives that no longer exist. Eugenics starting out as a plan. Yes. And it was implemented in somebody's wish, somebody's hope, somebody's decision has been and is being brought to pass. Abortion is death to the unborn regardless of how it's carried out. Now there's some that say, well, you know, abortion is legal now and uh, and for different reasons that can be uh, justifiable. When a woman is 
in danger of dying herself. There are times that doctors will sign off on the fact that the baby needs to be aborted in order to save the woman's life. When a child has been violated through incest, sometimes it's the father, sometimes it's the brother, through incense, yes, there are times when an abortion is justifiable. Rape. When a woman doesn't want the child concerning rape, I may be wrong, but abortion is justifiable. But just because to keep the population in a nation down among a particular people that has been enslaved, that has been trapped, that has been used in gerrymandering schemes. God is not pleased with that. So, abortion is a part and one of the greatest tools of eugenics. Again, eugenics is population control. The same thing that Hamas is doing to control the population of Israel. Same thing. Same thing. It's just a different type of strategy, but the same purpose. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Through all of that that has been done concerning people of color, notice how that God has caused prosperity. God has caused elevation. God has caused people of color to thrive regardless. Yes, the scripture says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yay, ha. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. The scripture comes because of God. The scripture, the Bible, a verse in the Bible, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That is God's word of faith to the people of color. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Why is that? Because people of color, they can be drunk, but they'll say, Lord, have mercy. It's historical that people of color, especially in the United States, have called on God in times of need, in times of help. So even so, again, we call on God that this this tool abortion will be brought further to a minimum and we will give God the glory if you are a person that does not yet know God and the pardon of your sins if you have not yet received the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior let me invite you to do it now as you are under the sound of my voice, ask God, say, Lord, forgive me for my sins, whatever they are. Help me, God, to do what you want me to do. Let God know, say, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and he is, and God will receive you and forgive you for your sins, including abortion. God forgives people uh, for committing abortion. He forgives people that pull triggers and use knives and all of that, God will forgive you if you have, if you pay for an abortion. 
God will forgive you. God's grace is sufficient to take you into his arms and love you. And he'll cause people to love you also. Now let's pray. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for the Spirit of God bringing this to the forefront. Hamas versus Israel. Death versus the United States Afro-American. We give you the glory now for the victory that those that will repent of their sins and turn to you. God, And we thank you for victory in advance that less Afro-American babies will go under the surgeon's knife ending their lives. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, beloved, thank God for you. And I'm asking you to give. We don't do this every day, but we do periodically ask that you would assist us in our spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Amen. You can give by way of cash app, dollar sign, Apostle G. Morris, men, M-I-N, or Zell, A-P-O-S-T-L-E-J-M at gmail.com. And so God will bless you for that. I guarantee you that God will bless you for that. Well, love you. Stay encouraged. We shall overcome.